What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I want to share a little bit about why they use partial sets in movies and how by understanding this process, you can apply it to your own filmmaking endeavors. This may seem self-explanatory to some of you, but regardless, I hope it will be an interesting case study in combining CG with live action footage. Okay, so what are partial sets? Well, a partial set is exactly what it sounds like. It's a set that is built partially so that the rest of the environment can be added digitally in post-production, or in some cases like The Mandalorian, a virtual LED wall projecting a CG real-time environment. Here's the big question. How do we know when to stop creating the partial set and where to add the extension digitally? There are a few things to consider here. One aspect you have to balance is your resources between creating the real foreground and the CG background. In other words, figure out which one is more expensive to create for your project. A lot of the time, a digital background is far less expensive to add, so filmmakers end up going further in this direction. That said, CG environments tend to hold up better when added further in the background rather than up close, depending on the quality of your CG environment and the power of your machine that you're rendering on. For big studios, they typically have plenty of high quality assets available to them, so this isn't necessarily the issue. The big factor for them is finding out what the actors in the scene are interacting with. It's far better for the actor's physical movement to be based on a real set within the scene rather than imaginary elements added in post, even if the CG looks as photorealistic as the real thing. In addition to this, anything the actors grab or physically touch is likely better to be a real set piece, as creating the contact shadow from a character is even more work in the post-production process, especially without a motion capture suit. It is said that one of the biggest elements that made the CG water scenes look so good in the latest Avatar movie is due to the fact that the actors actually had real water to interact with. Even though most of the environment was purely CG, the motion captured movement of the character themselves was much more realistic, in comparison to the first Avatar where they simply pretended to be swimming in order to create the motion captured data for their virtual characters. Now Avatar is a bit of an outlier since almost everything is CG, and there's no one answer to the question of where to create a partial set and where to add the digital environment in any scenario. However, if I were to make one recommendation, I would say to generally use the partial live action set in the foreground where characters interact with the objects and add the digital set extension into the more distant background. If the assets you are adding are of high enough quality, you can also add the digital set in the midground and foreground by the camera as well, preferably as objects that the character doesn't specifically interact with in order to avoid complicated contact shadows and cleanup. Anyways guys, that's it for this short case study on partial sets. I hope it was helpful. Of course, there are really no rules when it comes to visual effects because so much can be fixed in post. But that said, I hope you find this video informative. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects and filmmaking content, and I'll see you next time.